Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I have an abstract art journal page for you. It's been a while that I played with my watercolors and here you see the color palette that I have chosen for today's project. I was inspired by a nature photography magazine um, that I have subscribed to uh, many years ago and I still have the magazines laying around and always flip through them for inspiration. I'm starting the page by adding some metallic oil pastels, just some accents because they will resist the watercolors and just give me um, interesting shapes afterwards. I'm working in the Kunst und Papier watercolor journal. It's my favorite sketchbook and art journal as it takes watercolor very well, but you can do also mixed media in it. The oil pastels are the metallic ones from Sennelier. I really love those because they are super creamy. When I'm using oil pastels, I usually fix the whole page with a fixative afterwards or I um, just don't do anything on the other side so I don't ruin anything or I lay a piece of paper between the pages. I'm starting with the Naples yellow. I really love that color. It's an opaque watercolor but it's so beautiful and it goes perfect with a violet. I'm starting the background super loose with a very big brush and a lot of water. I uh, want to have some unexpected movement of the paint and I don't have any plans for this step. I think this is a fun part of watercolors. They have a interesting movement and they will work on their own on the paper if you are working with them in a loose way. and with the wet and wet technique. When I started working more with watercolors and I dived more into this subject, I often read that watercolors are very difficult and that it's really hard to master them and that you have to practice a lot. And I think that's just not true. If you want to play with watercolors, you can play with watercolors and you don't have to to start with only practicing. You can start with creating beautiful art. Of course, it's very difficult to create a photorealistic painting or to create a super realistic botanical illustration. That's not easy, but who says that you want to do this. You can create beautiful paintings with watercolors even if you have never worked with them and it's a really good way to practice. Yes, watercolors are not as easy as acrylics just because you can't paint over them. So if you um, put color down then it is there and you can't paint over it and make it invisible because the colors are always transparent and they layer up on each other and they um, build upon each other. So you can't cover up anything with watercolors. But that's sometimes very interesting and that's um, also the fun part, I feel, of watercolors. At the end of this video I have linked up more of my older watercolor videos where I also made some abstract um, watercolor journal pages and maybe you're interested in those as well. The colors I've used so far is a quinacridone violet and the dusk pink from Van Gogh and this is the opera rose from Rosa Gallery. I really love the granulating colors and I only have the ones from Van Gogh. I always put one or two granulating colors from Daniel Smith or Schminke in my cart in my online art supply store and when it's when I'm going to check out then it's so much and I think oh you don't need that watercolor for 10 euros you you can't just wait and buy it when it's on sale or anytime in the future when some of your paints are empty so I have never bought 
one of these paints. In my next step, I usually wait until the background is completely dry and as the background here was almost completely dry, I just kept on painting and I'm adding just some circular shapes uh, on top of my first layer. And therefore I'm using the Naples Yellow again and this is the Sap Green. I do this also very intuitively and I feel it's a very calming process. Um, I get into kind of a flow and it's very relaxing and this is something I love to do after a busy day in the evening. I am working with two different brushes here. I have uh, worked with the Da Vinci Casaneo and it has a more rounded tip. So it's not so good if you need a fine point. And here I have picked a watercolor brush with a uh, pointed tip. And there I just pick a border and then I go into the wet paint and draw some lines from one uh, place to another. And the colors flow into the lines and that gives a really interesting texture. If it comes to brushes, I believe you don't have to buy the most expensive watercolor brushes, but I think you should buy watercolor brushes because they are usually created to hold much water and uh, that's a really, uh, it's, it's really good if a brush does this because if you have a cheap brush that doesn't hold much water, it's very annoying playing with watercolors. But the brushes I have here are really not expensive. The Casaneo is a little bit more expensive than the other and the other is the house brand of my online art supply store. It's called Gersteka. Um I think it's available in Europe or maybe only in Germany and Austria, but um, they have really gorgeous brushes. I will write the name in the video description in case you might have the chance to buy there and they are not very expensive and they have a really excellent quality. I often get asked which paints I would recommend and if you don't have any watercolors then I really recommend buying a set from Van Gogh. There is a really nice set with 15 colors, 15 colors out there it's usually available on Amazon and sometimes you get the set for 13 euros and it's a super good price and they have really good quality watercolors. And I would not recommend buying a cheap watercolor set from Amazon that is not from a well-known brand. Every watercolor brand has their um, student grade colors and they are usually not expensive and they have an excellent quality. I usually let this dry before I go on top and create some botanicals. I really love botanical images on my work and this little um, part of a book is from my grandparents and I use the written paper for collaging and I put these uh, drawings out for inspiration and they are gorgeous and they are very inspiring and you just can um, use them to build some botanicals on your paintings and of course I don't redraw them exactly in the same way I just use them as a guide.
I think I will go with this here. I don't have many space on this page and I just want to paint some leaves. But if I paint the leaves without a reference, they always look uh, like the same. So I just sometimes use a reference so I get a different look. By the way, the dark color I have used was the paint's gray. And I also used the paint's gray to create the leaves. And here I'm also using a brush with a pointed tip because it's just easier to paint leaves with it. Some areas are still wet on my page, but I don't mind that. I think it's kind of an happy accident that gives you an interesting texture. To make the page interesting, I usually try to have a high contrast. That means I have some really light areas and some really dark ones. I'm just not a pastel painter, I would say. The color I'm using here is the Burnt Sienna. I decided to paint some more leaves at the right side more on the top and I'm just using the same color and the same reference. Here I switch to a really thin brush, it's called a rigger brush and I just um, paint some lines from this, from this dark cloud to the bottom. I decided I add a little bit more of the pink color, the opera rose, because there's only this one area and I always like to have more places where I have a color so the viewer's eye um, keeps moving around on the page. And I'm doing the same with the burnt sienna.
What you also can do to create more texture in a flat area, just use some water and paint some shapes in. This will give you a nice watercolor bloom. When everything is completely dry, I like to go in with pencils or markers to create some patterns on top so the page gets more dimension and looks more interesting. Here I'm using a pastel pencil. It's also something that I only use when I have nothing else on the right side because it transfers to um, other pages or I'm using a fixative. On my color palette there was a turquoise and I didn't use the turquoise on my painting so I will use it just with markers and the pencil. My favorite markers are the Uni Posca markers. I had never one that dried out and also they last a really long time and they always work perfectly on almost every surface. I'm drawing a lot of little ovals or dots because I just like these harmonic shapes but you can for example also um, draw triangles or rainbows or water drops or squares. It's just what you like the most. I'm also using the markers to redraw my botanical leaves so they pop up more from the page. This is my most favorite part of the painting when I add these details with markers or pencils because it's so p playful and the picture is almost finished so you can't really ruin something um, just with a marker so I feel it's pretty easy and also very relaxing. I finally decided to add the summer watercolor and I'm working with the pastel colors from White Nights. I really love them. They are more like a gouache paint, but they have so pretty colors. Of course, you can mix all these light shades by using white watercolor mixed with a um, normal watercolor. And it just adds some more dots and some simple shapes.
Yes, and that was my video for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my other abstract watercolor videos so you get some more inspiration. And I wish you a wonderful rest of the week. Bye!